Okay, this sounds like it. This seems like it. Seems like I have found it. A young man named Daniel has just lost two of his friends from suicide with the help of Kylob. Brayden, Dallas, and Mackenzie. He is able to move on, but strange things happen. All right, I'll read the first few sentences. Hold up, let me turn off this. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I recently lost a few friends to suicide, but my friends are doing that. This is fiction, by the way. My friends are doing their best to help me, and Mackenzie had stayed to hang out. Bad start, actually. Immediately bad start. Hey, Daniel, Dallas is here. I'm coming. Listen. Dude, I'm from England. If this is based off me, nobody here is called Dallas. Hey, cheer up. We're here for you, Daniel. Dallas chimes in. Cuts wrists. Daniel, stop it, please. The two scream. Four sentences in. Hold up. I actually want to point out that he's putting emojis in here. When it, when it says, hey, Daniel, Dallas is here, and I say, I'm coming, it is, I'm coming, sad face emoji. Imagine if you're writing, like, the Count, reading, like, the Count of Monte Cristo, or, I don't know, Shakespeare, and he's like, where for out, though, Romeo, sad face emoji. Kylo walks in, hey, Daniel, what the hell, Daniel, call this number now, you need help. Right, what number? Firstly. Secondly, I assume it's, like, a number for an ambulance? If so, shouldn't Kylob just ring the ambulance himself? Imagine if you found someone and they'd broken their leg. The first thing you would do wouldn't be to say, hey, call this number now and give them the phone so that they can call their own ambulance. You would call an ambulance. But mind that at the time, I didn't know how to cope with everything. I want to help. I don't want to do this, but it's the only thing I feel and the only thing that gives me relief to all of this, I tell them. Sad face emoji. Daniel, we can help you. Just let us. Do you want me to call up Schwabity? Oh, Schwabity's here! It is about me! Schwabity's in it! Also, I'd like to point out, Schwabity is not capitalized. It looks so out of place. It's like he copied and pasted a name. I bet, bet he copied and pasted the name because he didn't know how to spell it. That's why it's all in lowercase letters. Next, he says, You should tell him he's your friend, you know, Dallas told me. As I sent some of the messages, I felt as I, I was making him scared somehow, and that the only thing I had felt other than depression that day. Are you alright now, Daniel? Kylob, Dallas, and Mackenzie all ask me. In unison, I guess? I should be fine. I'm lying. I was never fine. You're not fine. I can tell. I've been there, explains Mackenzie. I fall to the floor as the voices in my head grow louder, while everyone else tries to figure out how it was caused. Help me! Ah! What will happen next? Will Daniel be okay? We got a fucking cliffhanger. I guess let's go to chapter two. As a recap, the voices in my head got super loud and I fell on the floor. Have you ever read a book where the second chapter starts with a recap of the first chapter? And not only is it a recap, but it's a recap from the first person perspective. Uh, and not even in the past tense. It's not like this is what happened. It's a. It's like... The voices in my head got super loud. I, I fell to the floor. I'm like screaming. And then all of a sudden, time stops. And I'm like, oh, by the way, guys, as a recap, there are voices in my head and I'm screaming super loud. Daniel, are you okay? All my friends call out. G guys, I need help. Call someone now. Frustrated emoji. Daniel, I have someone on the phone for you, Kylob tells me. She won't tell me who she is. Who is it? Who's on the phone? Ah, make it stop. Crying emoji. I scream over the pain of the voices in my head. Come on, man. She says she wants to help you. Kylo, I don't think he can right now. Can't you see the pain he's in? I'm gonna call 911. This is scaring me, Mackenzie says in a worried voice. Just crush my damn skull! I yell at pain. Zack walks into the room. Who is Zack? Z-A-Q. Daniel, stop. Things will get better. Trust me, I've been there. Seen it and done it. Just trust me when I say it will get better. I heard and was listening to what they all said. I just couldn't believe them because my mind told me not to and I proceeded to cut my wrists. I still have the knife in my hand? You think there are four people in this room now. You think one of them would have taken the knife out of my hands? Please, Daniel, stop it now. This is breaking my heart. Everyone shouts at me in unison. Perfect unison. I couldn't hear them over the sound of the voices in my head. It got worse every second. Soon enough, I tried to commit suicide. So casually. I can't take it anymore. There is too much pain weighing on me. And I'm standing on the chair ready to give up. Where did I get a chair from? Who, who are these four people that are just letting me stab myself multiple times and then go and grab a chair? No, stop this now, Brayden yells at me. He has not said anything yet. I'm sorry, you gotta go through this, but unless you can stop me or get another to stop me, it's all over for me. 
Jesus Christ. I'm giving my four friends an ultimatum here. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking kill myself right now unless you can try and stop me. I don't know, like it's a fucking game show. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Can you stop me? I'm putting my life on the line here. My four friends, Brayden, Zach, Mackenzie, and Dallas. Can you stop me? We'll find out. Da -da 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 -da. Two minutes later, she flipped out because she hadn't seen me like this, so she was almost scared. But there is more, trust me, it got hard to, I'll admit, I almost committed suicide that night, but then more shit happened and pushed my limit to be continued. To be continued? There's nothing more? Someone told me that I had sex with Mark in this, but it's, there's no more. That's it, that's the last chapter.